Hi, welcome everyone. Hi. Um, thanks so much for coming. We hope you find this evening informative. Um, we're having this event recorded by Hamilton Wenham Cam, so please keep in mind later during the question and answer period. If you have any specific or personal questions, please speak to me. I'm Leah Tabankin, I'm the high school nurse, um, or Mary Beth Ting, she's a middle school nurse. Um, and we also have Prudy Pelcanis, K through 12, um, 6 through 12 director of wellness, and we have Danielle Petrucci. Um, she is a life skills, 6 through 8. Yes. Yeah. Okay, but I'd like to introduce Diane Knight, who comes to us from Methuen, and she works for the Northeast Tobacco Free Community Partnership. Okay, thank you. Hi, everyone. Thank you for having me, and it's great to have such an audience that's great on a warm, um, soon-to-be summer evening, so this is great. And this is a hot topic. It's a topic that schools across the Commonwealth and across the nation, really, are, are looking at um, this topic of vaping. Um, I'm going to start with just reminding us all that um, the tobacco industry has been targeting our kids for a very long time. They're really good at what they do. Um, and they use three tactics um, in the process of um, moving things forward in their arena as a tactic. So one of them is sweet, um, one of them is cheap, and the other one is easy to get. And um, this encourages impulse buys by teenagers. Tobacco, um, in 2009, the tobacco industry tried to flavor cigarettes. And the Federal Drug Administration did not allow that because it was really quite obvious that they were targeting kids. Um, and so um, that was not allowed. They started flavoring cigars. So they had products like these small cigars you know, 69 cent cigars, and kids were using them and attracted to them. Um, cigars are taxed differently than cigarettes, and um, so, for instance, a pack like this was 250, you know, and, and still is in some places. So, um, there's no, we've moved, so the tactic of, I'm still smelling this grape flavor. So this grape, they started really using the flavor with a lot of these um, um, cigars and also blunt wraps and some of the other chew and some of the other products, tobacco products that have been used. And they're cheap too, like this one's four for 99 cents. Again, they're flavored. Um, in some communities, these um, are restricted. Um, around price, so the price of price point for some of these products has changed now. You can have a policy in your local community that there's no no multi pack is less than five dollars, and a single cigar in many towns, a, single, a cigar like this would be two fifty. So that's local policy that can really change. And many communities have done that, so that you really can't get these sixty nine cent cigars at at a convenience store anymore. So that's kind of some of the background of that. Um, so these tobacco industry tactics are really working. And the latest products that they're working on, so in the day it was cigars, it was cigarettes, now it's vapes and vaping products. And one about, um, 44.8% of young people, this was back a few years ago, this data is a bit dated now, we're waiting for some new data at the Department of Public Health, uh, but 44%, 44.8% of kids had tried or used an electronic product, and, um, and high school youth current use of these cigarettes was higher than the use of any other products, and it was around 15.9%, and that 
number had also gone down. Cigarette use, as you can see here on this slide, it's 7.7% now. Um, so we did a pretty good job in teaching young people that cigarettes aren't good for you. They really know that really, really well. And most young people um, would not, do not um, smoke, as you can see. But one in, f almost one in four, are current users of electronic products, which is, which I think is really kind of, it's too high. You know, it's scary to me. And I'm gonna tell you why, because um, adolescents are particularly harmed um, by nicotine. Their brains um, are um, not fully developed until they're 25 years old. And so nicotine changes the chemical and structural pathways in the brain in such a way that it makes young people, um, it lowers their impulse control. Um, it makes them more prone to depression and anxiety. Um, it disrupts brain circuits in such a way that it can interfere with learning and focus and concentration. And it also can prime these young brains for future drug addiction, addiction to other products. So um, that's really, you know, and kids who start as teenagers, they tend to use more nicotine products and it's much harder for them to quit. So it really, it, using nicotine at a young age really increases their risk of ever using combustible tobacco, because you can imagine when kids, are, if they're addicted to nicotine, you know, they could find their way back to a cigarette because they're addicted to nicotine, and that's just another product um, that contains nicotine. So, that I think it's important to start with that because um, nicotine is really the culprit, and these vaping products contain nicotine, and they're not harmless as kids often think that they are. They really think they're harmless. Um, and they're highly addictive. Nicotine is incredibly addictive substance. And so um, the leading reason that kids use in the data that we, we have is flavor. Um, they are really drawn to the flavor. Um, and it's very available to kids. And the... Um, Surgeon General, a few years ago, went, came out with a report and talked about electronic products and e-cigarettes as an emerging public health threat. And I'll tell you, I've done this job for a very long time, um, back in the day of cigarettes, and um, I have never been called by so many school systems. I mean, there was one day, it wasn't many weeks ago, where four school systems called me in one day. You know, they're all faced with the same, looking at their school policies, um, deciding, you know, what to do about this, this issue, because you have a product like this that's easily disguisable, you know, can be slipped up under a sleeve, can be hidden in a sock, um, can be used like this instantly with not a lot of evidence of, um, of use. The smell is maybe sweet. It's not like a cigarette. So, you know, schools have been challenged by use in schools by, by young people. So, um, I'm visiting with a lot of staff and a lot of um, parents and a lot of different communities. I have a 50 community region in the northeast of Massachusetts. So from Malden North all the way over to Kingsboro, all the way to Cape Ann, up to the, up to the border. So, you know, I've been busy and um, visiting, putting a lot of miles on my car. Um, so whether you call this product a, so they're called a lot of different things. Um, and they're all, they're a battery operated device that um, turns liquid flavored nicotine into an aerosol that is inhaled. 
So whether or not you're talking about this product, which is they're all a battery and some kind of receptacle, this one is an open unit where you can open up and put liquid nicotine into this part of it. Some of you may be already know all this, but some people in the audience, I'm, I find, you know, just don't look at this stuff. I mean, I probably would never look at it if I didn't do it for a job, right? So, um, but anyway, that's this one. I, I bought this one back quite a while ago now. The first one I bought, I like to do this and show you because I think it's pretty interesting. This is the first one I ever, no. This is the first one I bought after it was found in a mall. And someone came into the office and said, Diane, they're smoking in the mall. And I said, well, I don't think so. And, um, but it was, it was the first of the vaping that was, that was sold in the kiosks, right? So, um, and this one really does mimic a cigarette. I mean, it looks very similar. This was $100 in the beginning. And, um, and now I don't see these really anymore. And then a popular one, and this was felt really like kids were being targeted because as a parent, not, well, it's quite a few years ago now, um, but boy, if that was in a backpack, I'm not sure I'd think that was a tobacco product. So that is, they call it an e-hookah. This is strawberry margarita. So grandfather would probably not be using this, right? I mean, um, and, so and it certainly doesn't look like a product. What's the price point on the this one? Well, you both of them. This was ten dollars. And then the this one was a hundred dollars in the day. And the liquid? This one is twenty-five dollars. Oh, okay, so there's a real range. And what about the flat? blue? And then the liquid cost what? Five? It depends. I'll show you some different ones. It depends on the size. So you know, this one is a disposable, so this one came along too. This is made by, you know, that comp this company, Blue, and, and um, you know, they're all kind of now, this product, this company has a vape product like the Jewel. So this is the Jewel, the famous Jewel. This is the bow. Some of these are in bags because I can't really be touching all this stuff all day. So this one is the bow. It looks pretty much like the jewel. Very similar, same length, concaved. They get kids get skins. They they get they can personalize them a little bit, and they get that online. And um, yeah, and then this one was about twenty five dollars. Then there are other ones now that are, these are closed units and they are disposable. So you have some closed units that are disposable. You have the, the um, jewel that is not disposable, but you have to change the pod. So, so this is the pod. It's, um, I think you can get them for four or five dollars. They come in multi-packs. When you get this, it comes, it's, it, it's been running around fifty dollars, but I think there are now, very recently, been coming out with some bargain price points. So any of these products, I think you can get um, much for much less. And the pod is, um, equal to a pack of cigarettes and 200 puffs and it's very potent. Um, if I told you it was 59 milligrams per milliliter that probably isn't going to mean anything to too many of us but it's highly potent uh, concentrations of nicotine. How does that I think that concerns me. How does me. that come compared to cigarettes please? Do you have a comparison shot between the world of vaping and the world of cigarettes? In terms of, uh, I can't compare. Damage, in, uh, terms of damage. In health terms of health, damage. Health wise. Yeah. We'll go into the health. Or, I, I mean, it's. Intake, say, if that's the it's. Of the pack of cigarettes of nicotine. The same amount. I can't compare 
the actual amounts of nicotine because it depends on how the smoker smokes and how much they're taking in. Griffin. Um, something that I looked at um, in my research was a report or some studies that Juul published. And since, as you know, the device was, they claim created for um, adult smokers, they're trying to mimic that cigarette, that the nicotine you'd get from a cigarette, then to a Juul. So um, as you said, one pod is equivalent to one pack of cigarettes. Um, it's not too uncommon for people to go through a pod in a day, it happens. Um, a couple of days is, is common. But per um, hit for Juul, something that I looked at, was that it mimicked um, one hit of a cigarette in terms of the um, spike in your nicotine blood levels. Wow. So it can mimic it even at the lowest levels. So I'm not an expert on that. I'm not an expert. Griffin, Griffin may be more of an expert, actually, you know, because it is, it is a little tricky to compare. Because kids, um, you know, can put whatever in this. I mean, they can be putting liquid nicotine. They can be um, so. And to talk about the jewel, the jewel is from the jewel company. They have a certain 0.7 milliliters of nicotine in there, and you can look on the website to see how much. But it's really safe to say that this is a very potent delivery system, especially to young people who may be first time users. I would say this is more potent than a cigarette. I just want to add for the health effects, um, the, compared to a cigarette, uh, what I've read in some studies is that, so some of these devices, they actually, there's a coil in it that heats up some cotton that then creates the vapor. Um, when those coils get heat up, heated over, I think it's 400 degrees, which is very easy to do in the um, vapes, uh, it, it brings off a carcinogen, like the metal kind of acts as a carcinogen. So in, in, in comparison to cigarettes, it, it can be just as bad. Yeah, there are carcinogens in it. And we haven't had the time to have long-term studies yet right. on these products. We just haven't had the, the, the window of time to be doing that. I will tell you, a lot of people ask me about the aerosol and what people are inhaling and what that is like. And I'll tell you what the attorney, um, the Surgeon General says about that. The aerosol created by e-cigarettes can contain ingredients that are harmful and potentially harmful to public health, including nicotine. There are ultra-fine particles in that, and sometimes that comes from that coil that's inside. Um, flavorings are put into these products, and they're n and one of the flavorings is diacetyl, a chemical that is linked to serious lung disease, um, bronchiolitis obliterans. Volatile organic compounds such as benzene, which is found in car exhaust, heavy metals such as nickel, tin, and lead. So none of that sounds good to me in terms of being in your lungs. So I would say that is a real concern. And, and uh, what I hear from parents, a lot of the kids are saying, but mom, it's just water vapor. You know, right? Uh, have you heard that? It's like, no big deal. And so I think it's really incumbent upon us to really do whatever we can to help educate the kids so that they really understand what, what they're dealing with because I'm not sure they really know always. Um, it is an un... So the e-cigarette industry is, is um, regulated as a tobacco product by the FDA. But the FDA regulates these electronic products a little differently. They're not regulated in the same way at this point. So that um, the, um, the taxing of them, um, the, the content isn't regulated. So what you're reading on you know, you're not getting clear messaging. I'm, not, I'm just not sure. I don't trust what's inside if it's not regulated. So the contents are not regulated. That's an issue, and that really needs to change. Um, 
So this bottle of e-juice, it's a nice um, red melon, and it says zero nicotine. Some of these that say zero nicotine have been tested to find that there is some nicotine in them, so I'm not sure how much we can really trust about the levels of nicotine. This container says this product is not approved by the FDA. It contains chemicals known to the state of California to cause uh, cancer and or birth defects and or other reproductive harm. So remember the block parties, the barbecues, the 4th of July celebrations, the bursting flavor of red melon. Fill your mouth with memories of these festive occasions. It's sweet and juicy, and you won't run into any seeds with this delicious watermelon flavor. So there are lots of flavors. There are 8,000 flavors, as a matter of fact. 8,000 flavors. These, um, this is just a, a list of, or just a, an, an image of the different kinds of electronic delivery products that you can find. So whether they're, you know, a tank type of a unit, or whether they're kind of a pen, or whether they're um, a vape, an e-juice, and uh, I mean, not an e-juice, but a, 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 an e-cig, an e-hookah, they're all the same. So that's really what that image is, is all about. Now these flavors, they come in all kinds of flavors. Do you see here on the right, up, upper right, that looks like a juice box, okay? You can see I have it right over there on the desk as well. There's also a container, a box that looks just like Smucker's jam, grape jam. So there has been a lot going on with this e-juice um, that's really mimicking uh, food products. So recently, this was just this week, uh, the FDA, or maybe last week, the FDA and the Federal Trade Commission issued warning letters to some of these companies that are misleadingly labeled and are advertising nicotine containing e-liquids as friendly food products. So I, I had to copy this for myself. And you know, in here we have, this is all e-juice packaging for Sour Patch Kids, for vanilla wafers, for Oreos, for all kinds of products that our kids all know. And um, so they've been warned. So I'm, I'm very happy that the FDA is taking some action. That gives me a lot of hope because I haven't heard a lot about um, those things going on. Um, so is there nicotine in the e-liquids? Yes. Always. Not always. Well, we did, you know, I don't know how much we really know exactly about how much is in them if they're not regulated, if the contents aren't regulated. That's a concern. This one is a 60 milliliter bottle. Now, how do you like this? Can you get a good look at that one? If that doesn't look like a popcorn, you know, heading to the, to the movie theater, right? You open it, it's got the popcorn here. You open it up. And I'll pass these around. Yes. So I've heard that um, sometimes vape liquids have THC in them. Is that true? These products that I'm sh they don't have THC. But who I don't know. I've heard, you know, different health, ed different um, school administrative type folks, you know, they'll say, well, you know, if I take this from a young person, I don't really know what's in it. And in fact, they probably don't know exactly. Who's to say that a young person couldn't put THC into this? They absolutely can. Yeah. They absolutely well, they make them that are separate mm -hmm. for about 30, you know, I mean, no, people just like mm -hmm. that, that are THC. THC. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they do. Yeah. So I. You know, they could be. Yeah. Where do you buy them? Well, Jewel is at the Cumberland Farms, you know. Um, so there are lots of places, I think. You know, some kids get them online. Um, they, you know, can, 
back a few months ago, I heard a lot about online sales. Kids would go to um, CVS, they'd get a gift card, they'd go home, they'd go online, you know, they'd go to the Jewel website, they'd say, you know, are you 18, check, and it would get sent wherever they chose to send it to, pack mail or wherever, right? Um, Jewel, I think, has is trying to really, the age restriction piece is something that they're really working on. So I don't think it's as easy right now. People tell me you can get it on Amazon. There are some kids that maybe have a lot of money in their wallet and they choose to buy up a bunch and, and sell them to their friends. So, I mean, these are just ideas and thoughts that I've heard from other people. So, I mean, I don't know exactly where they get them, but sometimes if they don't have enough money to each have their own device, so they can each have their own pod for $4 or $5, right, and then share the, the delivery product, so. So yes. all of these pieces, yes. the pods, the mechanism, you can buy at Cumberland Farms if you're 18? Yes, you have to be 18. Okay. Yeah. Or any store that sells cigarettes, I imagine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any place that sells is a tobacco are. retailer. Right. Yeah. Also, the other place in Carly Street sells the sale of the Right. The, the other, whatever, that whole bridge sales across the street sells them too. And right. so does the one on 93. Right. Yeah. right. So, so, what you can do about this as a community is you can talk to your Board of Health, and your Board of Health can put in place policy, local policy, that would restrict the sale of flavored tobacco products to adult-only establishments, right? So I was in Danvers last week and they passed the policy in Danvers last week. Uh, the week before I was in some place, we're gonna do it in Lawrence in June. I mean, you know, they did it years ago in Lowell. What's an adult-only establishment? A place that, you know, sells a, a, an adult-only tobacco retail establishment. So they... Okay sell all kinds of vape products and tobacco products and you have to be to go over the door the threshold you have to be 21. yeah so it's like a smoke you know a smoke shop yeah so that's a that's you can usually tell when someone's smoking cigarettes because you can detect that tobacco on them is there any way you can tell if someone in fact is vaping is there any way you could tell? And so you, you suspect your child is vaping and you ask them and they deny it. Is there any way you could tell? Well, I think there is a hint of a sweet smell. There's a very sweet, you can smell it. I mean, there's different odors. I have friends that use them all yeah. the time and they're, yeah. I mean, it's yeah. on the flavor, but you're going to smell it. You'll smell something. Yeah. yeah. If it's a strong scent that, I mean, and they weren't having a great lollipop and you smell the scrape flavor in the air, right. something's going on. Yeah, thank you. Yes. So are retailers um, held to the same guidelines as far as um, the state inspecting and making sure that they're not sold knives as they are with cigarettes? There is a Board of Health program here that does stings. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, they that will happen. The same way. Uh, the, there would be the, um, if they were to sell to a minor. If you sell a minor a cigarette or yeah, they'd be, they'd be, yeah, I, I don't know, I don't know exactly in this town, for instance, when they do, if they do vaping stings or whether they're doing Marlboros or, you know, they, they would pick the product. But I can, I can get that information for you. I can get that information, yes. You can also have your dental hygienist Great. That's a great reminder. Not all hygienists are aware of some of the signs. You really have to do your research. But if you start them looking for it, they can also tell. Great. Thank you. For vaping. So, um, for anyone 
because dental hygienists can begin to tell signs of uh, vaping use, the suggestion is to be reminding our dentists to be looking and that they can, they can um, detect whether or not there is, has been vaping. Thank you. So a nicotine is nicotine is nicotine. So the question is, how? What do we do now that we have kids? Many, in many cases, in middle school as well. I mean, I'm told in my travels that it isn't just about high school. This is starting much younger, and kids that are addicted and can't get through the school day. You know, so that's why the school nurses are so important to this, and and really paying attention because there can be nicotine. nicotine overdosing and and um, and because of toxicity and the amount people are using I would say contact your pediatrician and um, and try to you know work work with them on on this um, you know it's withdrawal from nicotine whether you're you know it's a, it's the same um, Massachusetts has a smokers helpline, a Massachusetts smokers helpline, 1-800-QUIT-NOW, that's really a wonderful resource. So I would use all the, you know, resources that you, that come to bear, and um, I don't, I, you know, I don't know what we're going to do. Yeah, they, they well, they, well, in the beginning, it's not a, it's not a an approved um, cessation device because we don't really know necessarily what's in it, and um, and that was pitched in the beginning that you know a lot of people thought that vaping was was a cessation device, and and um, but it's it's not really an approved um, cessation method. Um, I would just I would just comment that somebody that's trying to get off cigarettes is not going to be going to a super sweet vape. You know, if they're looking to quit cigarettes, they're not looking for the flavor of a mango in their mouth necessarily. This is a new targeting by big tobacco to get a new generation. You know, the training we were at over the weekend, they were saying they're afraid they're going to lose this generation. This generation knows that they shouldn't be smoking cigarettes with, you know, tar and nicotine in them. So they're not going to smoke those products. So go for something that tastes like Sour Patch. Then we've got you hooked. Yeah. So you know what we really need to do, definitely we need to treat once addiction is in place. But the big focus has to be prevention. What are the signs of nicotine? Smoking. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, there is. Well, when the kids keep going to the bathroom a couple of times in an hour, you know, when your blood level of nicotine drops, you know, you, you crave and you get anxious and you are craving, are craving more nicotine. May I ask you a question? Yeah. Is nicotine um, allowed in that nicotine that you Marijuana, is that legal in Massachusetts? No, just again. Not today. Well, once it is, are yeah. children going to stop trying to use that? Well, they already are. <laughs> it's, it's legal. It's not legal to sell it. So they haven't figured out until we pass the, uh, whatever the motion was, to legalize it for small quantities. But they couldn't figure out then well, how do you allow, who's going to be able to sell it, et cetera, so that's what they're still working out. I know, so it's you can medical it, dispensary. Yes, yeah, so, so only in medical terms can you get it through a dispensary. Yeah. But in July, they're hoping to have, be prepared to open up shops for marijuana. There will be some open. I, I, I don't know. I'm not exactly sure when they'll be ready to open, but they, you know, we have, we all, you know, the voting happened, and, um, and they're preparing. 
the commission had a big job. Yes. Going back to um, signs of um, nicotine usage, um, do you think that um, it's common that students or just adolescents would experience like mood changes that they would be even if they're not quitting when they're not when they're not able to use it, you would see that maybe they're angry or they're acting in ways that they normally wouldn't. Do you think that's a good sign? Yeah, because they'd be withdrawing from nicotine, so they're not getting it. So they'd be. Yeah. It's a form of any. It's a form of self medication, like anything else kids are doing, whether it's drinking, whether it's smoking pot, whether it's nicotine, is this form of self medication. It's what you want to look for in kids. Um, you know, are, are, are they stressed? Are they having difficulty? Are they trying to cope? Uh, and having a tough time doing that. People turn to all kinds of things. Nicotine is one of them. Kids are people too, whether it's food, pot, booze, whatever it is, it's a coping mechanism. Yes, thank you. The other thing that I think is even at the highest level is that they're doing it in bathrooms. Mm -hmm. There's not, That's it's cool. not like if you have a cigarette, it consumes this whole thing. You know it from a baseball field the way the wind goes. This, from what I understand, it's like, it dissipates quickly. It dissipates quickly and it's not it's a right. concentrated it's, it's more of an opportunity to do that. Yes. Yeah. It's it, it disappears. You can blow it in your sleeve. Blow it in your sleeve, you can swallow it, you know, whatever. Um yeah. I would encourage um, besides having local policy here, I think it's important if we can this it's a great time to be you know channeling youth energy into moving a topic forward and if young people understand how this is dangerous and not good for them that there is an organization called the 84 um, it's a statewide youth movement it was started um, when 84 percent of young people did not smoke cigarettes and now it's 92 percent um, but this youth movement of kids, there are about 200 of them last week, they went to the State House and educated their legislators on um, this vaping. Um, and so I would encourage young people from Hamilton Wenham High School also to, it's a high school activity, um, to be involved because it's, it's a great leadership opportunity for, for young people to be involved in and they can, they can teach um, their peers and work with their peers around this topic because I think it does need to be led by um, by young people. I really do think that's very important. Um, I do have more information, but I'd like to invite um, Griffin up here, Penn, Griffin Penn. He is. Um, He and I had the opportunity, I, I just met him last night, I had the opportunity to, to talk with him and um, we had a great chat. He's um, done a project here at the high school and um, I'm, I think you'll all be interested to learn um, about what he has learned um, and what he cares about. He can explain a lot more about the youth perspective, I think, than I can. So thank you. Come on up. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Griffin Penn, um, I am a senior at the high school. Recently I just finished working on a research paper in which I looked at the effects that nicotine has um, on adolescents, also looked at how um, electronic cigarette industries are targeting us. Um, and like Dan said, it's a fact and it's real. Um, I also looked at the popularity of Juul because it's something that um, in recent years has just affected our schools um, very much. And I was invited to speak here and give my um, insight. I think it's also very important to have um, a student perspective. So I'm not gonna uh, talk about all the things that you already did, but um, I will talk about a few things. I also think that for um, the generations, the older generations that smoke cigarettes, when cigarettes back in the day used to be very big in high school. Um, and now that's something that I think that people did because it was something that their friends did. Um, it was around and there wasn't the education, the resources,
to give people a reason otherwise why they shouldn't do it. I think that um, our generation is facing a very similar problem, but I think that um, with people as talented and um, as Diane, um, I think that we spread enough awareness. Um, we just need to get the information across to our kids. I think we have the resources to say that the effects of nicotine on adolescents is a reason alone that we shouldn't do this, um, and nicotine itself. Um, I think that for our kids, everyone knows someone that is using a jewel, using an electronic cigarette. Um, it's not something that we are unfamiliar with. And I think that the, um, the impact that these things have had in our schools and our friendships, relationships in the environments has completely, has completely changed due to this. Um, like I said, the sad truth is that we all know someone um, and there's a good chance that we know that half the people we know are using electronic cigarettes. So um, I looked at, when I was doing my research project, um, I found a lot of information that talked about how many kids were using electronic cigarettes in the United States. Um, and I wasn't too um, happy with the information I was finding, or I wasn't content, so I decided to do my own survey um, here at the high school. And with the help of um, guidance and the English department, I put out a survey um, asking every student um, to answer a couple questions. One of them was if they'd ever used an electronic cigarette before. Um, if they responded yes to that question, they were asked if they had ever used um, a jewel specifically, and also asked um, if, if they had ever used a traditional cigarette. Um, what I found was it was roughly 10% of students had, had used a cigarette. Um, and for the electronic cigarette portion, I compared it to a survey that I found um, or that students had taken in 2015 to compare my results. Um, and in 2015, 23.6% of students said that they had used an electronic cigarette. Um, and what I found was that 48.5% of students in this high school said that they had used an electronic cigarette. And that number definitely seemed um, more um, true and more correct today. And I thought that there was a very specific reason why that number was as high as it was. So, like I mentioned, I had a follow-up question for if you had responded yes, and it was, had you ever used a jewel? Um, and the percentage of students that had that responded yes to using an electronic cigarette, it was 98.5% of students had used a jewel. So it was everyone except two kids. It's crazy. It really is. Um, I think when I was talking to Diane last night, something that she told me was that, and that I had already been thinking all these thoughts, is that we should be, she was surprised that more kids aren't, I guess, they're not pissed off about what's going on. They're not mad that today's electronic cigarette companies are so obviously targeting us and that, not, and that nothing is being done. Because their tactics are working if 50% of the kids in our high schools are using electronic cigarettes. If all of our friends are leaving class twice a day to to go use their jewel because they can't they can't pay attention, they can't concentrate in class if they're not. Like literally this morning I had one of my friends, some of my class, just stick their hand out and show me how badly they were shaking because they hadn't got their hits this morning or whatever. It's really sad. Um, and I think that there's absolutely no reason why we should have um, flavored electronic cigarettes. Throughout this whole process, I've talked to um, tons of my friends this morning. I presented to my English class. Um, I also got the opportunity to present the information that I found um, in my health class. Tomorrow, I'm gonna be doing a very brief presentation to some juniors. And along the way, I've just talked to all my friends. And for the past few months, people have had to listen to me uh, rant about all the things that I've learned. And I'd like to think that I've had an impact and um, convince some people that um, to put their jewel away and to, um, and to never begin in the first place. But I also think that students have observed the way that it's affected their friends. And I think that people have looked to their best friends and seen changes in them and seen that they're not in control of themselves or, and their lives are literally being controlled. And it's something that, that's a priority to them is using an electronic cigarette. It's using a jewel. Um, it's really sad. I think that 
when pe parents are really worried about um, where their kids are getting the stuff from. But I think at the end of the day, students or high schoolers or teenagers um, were smart and we can find a way to get our hands on pretty much anything that we want. Um, and the truth is that if in Hamilton, one of that you have to be 21 years old to go buy um, an electronic cigarette product, maybe in other towns nearby, it's 18. I'm 18. Like we have friends who are in middle school, who are who are freshmen, um, and there's there's you can just ask them to get it for you. It's not hard. Um, there's also there's also stores that um, do not abide by uh, the laws and they do sell to minors. Um, it's the truth, and I think that something that I've learned throughout this whole process is that there's going to be people who have already made up their mind. There's already going to be people who. Um, are going to use things regardless, but, and people are going to get their hands on things. But I think the best way um, that I found of combating this is just spreading the word. For me, just, I think that being a senior in school and just talking to people and they see me and they know that, <laughs> like, I'm not someone who is going to be like, yeah, cool, jewel. I'm just like, I think that that has had an impact on its own. I think that. It is important to understand that nicotine's effects are very real on adolescents because our brain is still developing. Um, and the sad truth is that, like Diane said, we don't know the long-term consequences of using electronic cigarettes. Every device, every juice has their own, their own nasty chemicals, their own carcinogens in them. Um, and it's too early since the birth of electronic cigarettes to formulate a com complete conclusion and be like, this is what's going to happen to you. The sad truth is that my generation, um, my friends, are, we're the lab rats, and we're going to bring that answer one day, and it's not going to be through, through experiments. It's going to be through looking at the people you're once friends with and see what happens then. The same reason that they found out that they established a link between cigarettes and lung cancer. It's the same way that we're going to establish a connection between electronic cigarettes and whatever whatever the consequences are that, that come from them. Um, it just, it's really scary how we are somehow letting history repeat itself. And now if anyone has any questions you'd like to ask. Yeah. I have a question. Great job. Yeah. Um, Great job. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but my question is, how many surveys did you send out, and how, if you know, what was the response rate? I did one survey, and it got 300 responses. Um, freshmen through seniors, everyone in the high school yeah. had access to the survey, they were aware of it. Um, all, like, all the, so what I did is I, um, um, it was given to all of the English teachers, mm -hmm. and in a span of over a few days when the English teachers, with every English teacher in the high school had all four grades mm -hmm. and they had given them the, um, they had told them about the survey and put it on a classroom so they could go on and take it if they chose. Um, and I was fortunate enough to have half the school respond. So it was about 50%, so 300. Yeah, it was 50% of students that answered. That's more than half. Because we're 500 at the high school, and so that's 300. Mm -hmm. More than half, and it was 48.5% said they used electronic cigarette okay, at least one time. I have a question. How come your mom and I never heard anything about this <laughs> until, until a couple days ago? We no comment. We have a nice relationship. Good job. Any more questions? <laughs> yes. How much money do you think your friends are spending on this stuff? How much money? Well, like Diane talked about, I think. You can get a jewel starter kit for around 37. 37 bucks. It's not hard. I think a pack of pods, maybe a pack of four pods goes for around twelve, fifteen dollars. The device itself ranges from ranges from twenty to thirty dollars, I believe. And you can go on YouTube and refill those pods for yourself. You don't even have to buy new pods. You can so buy the juice. with the jewel specifically, um, what I found why the F why it's so has gained so much approval from the FDA not the contents itself, but the device is because um, you can't really regulate what, you can't change what's in there. 
what the what the Joule device does is it gives a very consistent temperature um, to heat up the pods to give a consistent um, smoke or or vape. Yeah. So what's what's in there? What, what's in the pods? Is what you see is what you're going to get. Um, and students, t typically, no one that I have ever I've never personally come across is people filling them up themselves. I'm sure it's been done. People trying to you gotta kind of hack in there, but. It's not hard to get your hands on a jewel or a pot. Anyone can do it. One of the things I would share with you that's very disturbing that speaks again to the targeting of children is if you look at blue.com right now, there's a big push. One dollar starter kits. That's right, only one dollar to get you started. So it's making making it very cheap and accessible. It's a trial. One dollar. I ordered one. Talk about Juul. Is that a brand versus yes. what is that it's comparison a to e-cigarettes in general? Why is that? It's just its own company. It's not owned by the tobacco or industry. Is that the? It's just the cool. So one. In, the, in the survey that I did, when 48.5 percent of students said that they would use an electronic cigarette, 98.5 um, percent of those students said that they had used a Juul as well. So I believe that that is a spike. And coming from a high school student. Um, I haven't really um, recently seen any other brands. This is, it's pretty much it. So that's the device of choice. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, that's right. it's the number one electronic cigarette in the world. Yeah. And it's the most powerful. Yeah, it doesn't feel like that. Yes? Griff, where do you see these marketed? Where do I see these marketed? Or any electronic cigarettes. So, um, in general, I think the marketing strategies, like Dan talked about, the electronic cigarettes are using, it's one, it's flavor. You know, in your social life, like on social media, do you, are you exposed to advertising for these products? Not, not, not necessarily. It's not like I would be scrolling on Instagram and you'd get an advertisement um, saying, buy a Jewel M. But what you see, um, the marketing, well, the marketing strategies that these companies use is they make something that looks like a flash drive. Yeah. Kids drop them on the school, teachers pick them up and hand them back to the students and say, you dropped your flash drive. It happens some schools in the country have banned flash drives. Others have removed doors off of bathrooms. Um, so I think that for the marketing, the device itself, is it's marketed towards children. You have one kid that has it, um, using it for whatever the flavors, the head rush, whatever it may be, they're using it because it's cool. Someone else sees that, and they're seeing anything like that. They want it. It spreads because it's something that everyone uses. It's it's perfect for high schoolers. It's perfect for middle schoolers. It's perfect for kids. So it seems like kids do know about tobacco and mm. nicotine and not to smoke. Very Is it that they're not aware that this contains nicotine and that's why it's so popular? Are they being are they thinking that this isn't? Yeah. I don't that? think I don't think they all know there's nicotine in it, and they don't know what being addicted to nicotine really means. And, and the, in, the information about the brain, the developing brain. I, I don't, I really do think they don't know in, well, in some cases. Also, I recall correctly, originally when they introduced these e-cigarettes as a way, as a cessation methodology, mm -hmm. the uh, big attraction was it doesn't have tar. Right. So the cigarette has tar and nicotine, so it was marketed as a healthier way to, so if you could smoke, you're still addicted to nicotine, which is hard to get up, but at least you're not taking in the talk. Yeah, harm reduction. And that probably is still held over to this day where people think, well, it's e cigarettes, it's, not, it's harmless. Yeah. Well, I mean, like you said, the e cigarettes have been around since 10 what, years? T 10 years, since the early 2000s, and they still haven't been approved by the FDA as an effective means of quitting smoking, and they've been around all this long. Yet we still have the idea that um, that's what adults believe that that's what, that they do work. And, um, for that purpose, and it just takes an entirely new generation, new market audience. If there, if there are, you know, there's been some research that says that if if they're used by adults that have smoked heavily, that they may be, you know, that that there's some recommendation that they that may be effective, an effective change for that person as an adult user, only uses, has only smoked cigarettes in their life, would it be better for them to smoke a cigarette or, or vape? You know, so. 
that like, there's some research about that being mm -hmm. tossed around, but not for kids. And like was mentioned earlier, why would someone who's smoking cigarettes want to use a mango flavor? They wouldn't, they'd probably want to use tobacco, so why do they exist? Family first. So we were talking about um, the kids, about you know, education of the brain and the, with you know nicotine. So in our curriculum, we are educating the students on um, the skill base. So it's on how to evaluate, how to analyze, how to research. And then on one of our, we have transfer goals, and one of our transfer goals, it talks about, um, the question is, what are the impact of our decisions? So as they spiral through the curriculum, they're learning. In middle school, they're learning about all sorts of, you know, the skills and how to research and analyze. And in the high school, they, um, they do a problem-based research in a lot of the phys ed classes because we have a health component. The juuling is a hot topic this year with the kids wanting to research it within the PE Good. classes. And I know that you have presented to your class today. So I, the kids are definitely um, they're interested in it, and I think the message is getting out there that it is not that healthy choice. It's not that um, the fruit flavors and all that. So they are trying to use these skills that we've been teaching them. And I know they started elementary school teaching them on decision making and refusal skills and to think about the impact of their decisions. So for me, as you know, the department head, I think it's great that kids are trying to research and then they present their research to their peers in their class. That's so great. the kids are being exposed to it all across the board within the phys ed classes. Right more needs to be done. I was piggyback on what you're saying. Did you you know, being a, the health teacher in the middle school, I noticed that throughout the years, you tell kids that you know, this is what cigarettes do to you, this is what vaping does to you, this is what smoking marijuana does to you, but yet they still do it. And it's that skill development, and the Center for Disease Control and Prevention um, has proven that it's, it's the skills that they develop over um, their education career. And, that will actually help them to analyze those influences of the big tobacco and the uh, vaping industry. To, like you said, Griffin, your peers should be PO'd. <laughs> um, and they should be, but there's maybe, you know, we do a better job of developing that skill, but I think it's a societal thing too, because they're seeing other kids online, you know, talking about it. But decision making, analyzing influences of the media, um, the, the research part, skills. The tough part is, they're 18 years old, mm -hmm. you know, 15, 16, Thrill 14. Mm -hmm. They were immortal. Yes. Correct. And the teenage brain right. is nothing to mess with. Right. So, right. so, so it's a low hanging fruit and it's despicable. Yeah. And right. um, I'm, I'm, I don't know what you do about it. Right. Well, part of it is having them have these conversations. So, Griffin yes. has had a lot of conversations with his peers, mm -hmm. right? And they need to have that, that debate back and forth yes. of why, why it's okay, why it isn't. And they, they need to um, they need to research it so that they can make because ultimately we want our children to be able to own their decisions and we want them to be able to understand the impact of their decisions now and how the, that will impact them in the future. So these type of conversations that Griffin has and when the kids have it within their PE slash wellness class, that's helping them learn that that skill set because there's always going to be something. So in five years from now, there's going to be something else mm -hmm. that they will have. <coughs> I've just passed, I'm oh, sorry. Where, where are the tools that I thought we were going to kind of get from this discussion on how to talk to our children about vaping? I've heard this information here. I've also read some of the stuff on the vaping side. They both have their own ideas about what it is. Neither of them have what I would consider solid facts. And I, as a parent, am stuck in the middle where my kid is like, I have this thing that says it has no nicotine. All the kids on YouTube are doing it. They're having fun with it. Her bringing to me information about what she sees. I'm looking to get information from the other side, but both sides of it, everything I read on both sides is a topic. Nobody knows. They don't know. Really, one way or the other, she's speaking to you, 
but is there health effects to the ones that don't contain it? I mean, th this is what's affecting the middle schoolers. Is they're, they're saying, oh no, I don't want nicotine. I just want this flavored juice. So what? how would you say to speak to the kids about that? Well, like, I think having the, first of all, having the conversation is great, right? And so you could, you know, they're gonna pull off the facts that are going to go their way. Right. So I, as a parent, you know, an adult, maybe, you know, go online and, come up with facts that you can have that conversation with them. Well, what about this? You know, have those things. Or, you know, talk to them about the impact of how this will affect their health. Because common right. sense says you I inhale something. So I would encourage you, the Center for Disease Control has put out a really nice handout here. Yeah. It's talking with your teens about e-cigarettes. Yeah. It's a tip sheet for parents. So thank you for that wonderful lead-in. I think the, the facts, the questions in, and answers that are in this handout are, if I was speaking with teens, this is how, what I would respond. When they were, why don't you want me to use e-cigarettes? What's the big deal about nicotine? Aren't e-cigarettes safer than conventional cigarettes? I thought e-cigarettes didn't have nicotine, just water and flavor. And I would look at these and see if you're comfortable responding to some with with some of these because delivering this content I think is what we really have that's fact. I just wanted to ask uh, Griffin uh, if he if he knows in fact that this is more popular with boys or girls, would be more apt to vape. From what I've noticed, yes. um, it seems to be a pretty even split. I wouldn't say that more boys are using it. Although, I mean, because I'm only in the boys' bathroom during the day. <laughs> and all other times. But yeah, so I don't. One time. Did you talk to any middle schoolers with your research? I have a younger brother that's in middle school. And he's going through all the same stuff that high schoolers are. So yeah. When you go into the bathrooms, are they vaping? Yeah, I would say that. Um, Almost every time I'm in the bathroom, mm -hmm. if there's another, if there's someone else in there, there's a good chance they're using. Or I'm not saying they just went there just to use the jewel, but I think it's happening all day long. From what I've seen. I just thought maybe it was more of a temptation with girls because today the look is ultra thin, and I think if a lot of girls feel like having something to eat, they'll say, "Oh, I think I'll get a strawberry flavor, whatever you call it." Mm -hmm. To take my urge to eat away. That's why I thought maybe little girls would be tempted to do it. You know, it's a possibility. Yeah. And also, those that have been vaping for ten years. I'm sorry. Those that have been vaping for ten years. Is there any stats on health issues with any of those people? So it's, it's kind of similar to the question that was that was asked over there. Um, like, what concrete evidence can you give me on um, the effects of the other stuff that's in there, not nicotine? Um, um, Diane's more of an expert on that, and like she said, all that information is in that packet, but again, we have to understand is that this industry, the electronic cigarette industry, and its targeting of the youth and their success in our schools is so recent. So when our adolescents, when our kids are going to grow up, that's when, that's when I think that we're going to see the effects. I mean, it took the cigarette industry years to realize that they were bad for you. I think we're following the same exact patterns. And they're doing data, this, they're collecting data all the time now. I mean, this is, the researchers are, are busy. So we'll have good data. So just to, I have two questions for Griffin, but also just to piggyback on that. The simple thing is, is I'm quite sure they're not squeezing fresh mangoes to get this oil. You know, it's right. a synthetic version of that fruit. You know, we don't sit around at, at a, a fire pit and plastic on it, it's going to smell horrible. It's going to be horrible for our lungs. It's the same exact thing. You put a synthetic, whatever it is, into an intense height, uh, hot heat, it's going to release toxins. Yes. So other than the nicotine, there it is. Um, but my question's for Griffin, because two, one, one quick one. When I was dropping something off in, um, the other day at the high school, and I think it was all the pods. 
I saw something littering all on the inside of the bushes and stuff mm -hmm. out in front oh, of the high school. Wow. But it, that's probably what it is, mm -hmm. right? It's the pods. Yeah. Empty. Yeah. And the second question I want to Yeah. Griffin, do you have any friends that are like health compromised, either asthma or any other? And, and have you personally noticed a difference in some of your friends, other than behavioral, health wise? I would say that if you have a student, if you have a child that's a student in high school, um, they know someone that's using a jewel, they know someone that's addicted, um, and they probably know someone that's changed because of that reason. Um, I've noticed in some friends of mine that it becomes a priority. It's not something that you control, and especially at this age. You don't have, your brain's still developing, you don't have the abilities to, well, most people Most people will say, well, they're in denial. They'll say they're not addicted, they like to think that they're in control, they like to think that they're using it because they like to experience a head rush, and nicotine for them isn't addictive because, because they don't use it all the time. But I found that those same people using it for months and months, and they're leaving class every day to go to the bathroom, and I mean, eventually it just, it, it catches up with you. I think it's obvious to your friends around you that it's a priority. I've seen it in close friends. I've seen the way they treat other people, and... Yeah, that's all I can say. It's a priority for them. Do you know what the repercussions are on the high school level as far as if they, if they get caught, which I know is incredibly hard for, for the faculty to, to catch them, but are, are there standard protocols for the kids? Do you know, like um, suspension or water or something? You know what? So I'm, I'm speaking for the administrators. I know that if they will you know, take the kids in, and I know that they can test. Yeah. They'll, they'll test to see what's in the the jewels or, or whatever, and then it, it, my, this is my assumption, it's going to be right in the handbook because it's tobacco right. and nicotine. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I yeah. think what's happening now and with the help of um, <clears throat> Diane, um, we're re revisiting the policies. So next year we'll have a policy that is more in line with the vague year and whatnot. And there will be, there are consequences. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there are, sure. you know, there are consequences. Right. Yeah. I'm sure there are consequences now, but the schools are all really looking hard at their own policies. Whether you're a private school, public school, parochial school, I'm and visiting all of them. They're all looking at their policies and making decisions on what that will look like. And we have tremendous um, guidance from the Mass Association of Health Boards. And I have the sample policy here with me. And I have handed it over to the schools, so they have it. Yeah. Most schools are looking at it. Um, I like at a good point. I think at the same time, um, if we increase our policies and we crack down on students who are using using jewels, it's I feel like in a way it's the same thing as a parent telling them not to do it, and they're going to do it anyways. I think that it's definitely something that needs to happen. Same with legislation, getting rid of the flavors and electronic cigarettes. We need schools to crack down. We need parents to know what they're dealing with, and. Most of all, we need to present our kids with this information, and they're going to be the ones that are going to decide if they're going to do it or not. Because if they're addicted to something, they're, the odds are they're going to continue doing it. So I had a comment on that. We have um, at our school a five-day suspension policy when the kids are caught, and some kids are so addicted, they've been suspended three different times because they just can't stop. The it's, yeah. it's But my other question was, we have field trips coming up, and we're so afraid that kids are just going to be puffing away and we can't catch them. Is there any, for the nurses too, is there any kind of, like, could you tell if a kid was like overdosing on the nicotine or had too much? Like, what would be signs that a kid would be really Nausea, vomiting, I mean. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, out of Fox Woods. Excuse me? So. <laughs> you know, then how, for someone to, take too much nicotine or overdose of nicotine is not something that I've seen kids do from, no, or not I mean, I've not. experienced. No, I don't think there's a way to, to identify it. I mean, you can smell it, but I mean, unless you want to, to I mean, like treat kids as criminals and pat, and pat them down. Continuously puff and puff and puff and puff and puff on it. It's ranges from maybe like an average of, I think in high school, maybe like 10, to 50 hits per day. 
so it's it's not it's not something that's continuously going on. I think it's if you look at you said something very insightful. History repeating itself, and it is. So I think the the, the best learning experience we're going to have is looking at what happened to cigarettes and that progression. You know, people up until their friends and family were dying of lung, lung cancer didn't really address it. Something's going to happen. And, 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 and at, at that point, you know, education is the best thing we can do. Legislation is the best thing. And, right. then, and then people are people and kids are kids. And it's You know, the legislators were talked to all day last week. They're becoming educated. Um, legislation is being worked on. I was today at a meeting at the Mass Medical Society this morning, and we're working, we're meeting, a lot of meetings are happening, um, the campaign for tobacco free. I mean, there are a lot of organizations where this is their work, the Heart Association, the Lung Association, we're all working together. You know, this is something the Department of Public Health is really working on. We're coming out with a media campaign in a few weeks. It's targeted to educating adults, so we can look forward to that. Um, that's coming. We've got a toolkit coming for schools that's coming. Um, there'll be a, tool, a toolkit for schools and then a media campaign focused towards educating adults and then this one focused on kids that will be coming this summer before the start of the school year next year. So, you know, we're, we're on it. I think we're on it. Yeah. Hi, I hope everyone can hear me. Um, I just want to answer more from experience, more than facts. Um, so, uh, I hope everyone, yeah, so I hope everyone can hear me. Um, so my name is John. Um, I'm a senior here at Hamilton Wenham. Uh, I have a friend. So I'm going to shoot some examples because I want to answer people's questions that I feel like weren't answered. Um, my friend, uh, good friend, uh, he's been smoke, doing jeweling for a year. Uh, he goes through a pack, so a pack would have five pods. Roughly do a pack a week. It's like twenty-five dollars for a pack. So he spent eighteen hundred dollars in one year just on jeweling. Um, that's a rough estimate of, of you know how much they're spending uh, just in a year period. If you're a consistent uh, vapor. Um, to answer the THC question, the thing is called dab pens. Uh, they would have you know strains uh, the THC extracted from the marijuana uh, plant, and it's just a wax that they put in a pen. Those are found in California and states where marijuana is legal, obviously not in our state. Um, people buy them online. Uh, they'll use older family members, um, friends they know, people who have graduated that are over 18 or 21, uh, depending on where they purchased it, but that's through online. So if you see a dab pen or THC uh, liquids, um, that's not from our state. Um, to answer another question on Advertising, you don't see too much advertising because the best advertising is word to mouth. You're hearing, you know, jeweling. We're also seeing on social media. I don't see jewel advertisements. However, I see college kids, jewel, you know, jeweling, you know, too cool for school, you know, jeweling's cool type advertisement. So you see a lot of that style advertisement, not necessarily from the um, company because they don't, the company doesn't need advertisement if all you have to do is go on social media and you see how your friends do it and stuff like that. And I think that's a problem is, you know, older kids can legally do it. Um, and so it influences younger kids. And I know it's happening in middle school. I have a younger brother in middle school. He has friends who are doing it who they're like, oh, it's fine, it's whatever. And it's, I personally don't think, I mean, um, you can disagree with me on this. I think kids know it's bad for you. I just don't think they see it as a negative. And I think it's more of, you know, it's smoke, but it's not a cigarette. I think they know it's not healthy for you. It's just they don't care of the difference, mm -hmm. per se. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about was uh, people were uh, saying, what was it? Um, oh, I have a brain fart. You can't too young. I think it was people were having issues with you know, uh, seeing the other people do it. Oh, it was a parenting thing. I, I, I remember it. So, uh, answering your question over there with the sunglasses, you were talking about parent, parenting and how to talk to your kids. For starters, I mean, everything's person to person, family to family member. So, you know, that, that varies. However, I recommend that parents, please don't victimize your child for doing this. 
don't make it seem like a sin or that they're a rebel or they're bad for doing this. Uh, they feel shame. They will most likely do it again behind your back because uh, they feel like, oh, my mom said I can't do this. I'm going to do it anyway. Yeah. Um, so don't victimize them. Please talk to them. Um, if they can't control it, some people can. That's why I said it's person to person. You know, a child could be like, you know what, Ma, you're right. I'm going to stop. And they'd be willing to stop on their own. Um, some people can't. So uh, she said some options like the nicotine help, you know, the nicotine patches. And it really sucks to say that for a little kid, you know, while they're taking nicotine patches. But at such a young age, they can't get addicted. Um, and, you know, it, that, that's kind of the thing that I have for the parenting. I, I would talk to your kid, don't victimize them. Just like any other thing, when you talk to them about marijuana, alcohol, you inform them, don't victimize them. That's kind of my base for that and how parents should, you know, tactically go about that. From there on, I hope your experience as a parent with your child kind of kicks in, because I'm not a parent, nor do I have a kid of my own, so I don't know how my kid would react. However, I hope you can, based on good judgment, go from there. Uh, so I hope I answered some of the questions parents had uh, that they didn't feel like got answered. So thank you for listening. Thank you. Well, I think um, I appreciate all of you coming. And yeah. One more question. In your poll, did you have any poll teachers? No, it was just available to students. For for most of the teachers. Um, I mean. So to my knowledge, um, I don't think that teachers are using electronic cigarettes. I mean, unless they're using them as a way to quit cigarette smoking. Um, on the comment of teachers, I would say that teachers, as well as many parents, just like you guys are here today, they're out of touch and they don't really know what's going on. And I think giving you guys the information is important so you can pass it on to your kids. Same with teachers. Like, I am doing this project in English class, and every day when I'm going in and learning the research, I mean, my English teacher and I are discussing it, and we're both learning new things every day, and I learned that the teachers don't really know as much as what's going on. I forgot to say yeah. one, one more thing. I will say that um, we have had the police come and talk to the staff um, during staff meetings. We've passed around um, jewels to show, show and tell and what to look for, um, and we are trying to combat this. Yes. Um, but you're right, Griffin. I mean, we, we as teachers need to, you know, get on board and figure out what's going on. Yeah. And it'd be great if one of you guys could go to the middle school and talk to them. <laughs> yeah. Because, yeah. Um, kids need to get into it. We've also been tackling it at the middle school, but you have to appreciate with such a clandestine um, device. You know, it's not out in the open. It's here. It's, mm -hmm. you know, like this in the hallway. If you've ever seen traffic in the hallways, if you've ever seen what's going, you know, it's gotten to the point, I will tell you honestly, that I have been on the second floor. Mr. Harvey, I need you in this, out of the second floor boys' bathroom. You know, we're now running into bathrooms. Oh. I mean, that's the point that we're at. So we are definitely aware that it's an You're issue, it. and we're trying to tackle it as best we can. So please, let's all be in partnership together yes. to have conversations. And, you know, if you know things that we need to know, then let us know, and if we need, if we know things that you need to know, it'll be a two-way street. Yeah, we're all working together on this one. Doesn't that get No, so we're all working together. And if you have any further questions, I think you can come up. We've got some material. I've got some materials here that you might find helpful. Thank you.